Well, our rustic getaway isn't done. It's time to follow in the footsteps of a true pioneer, Father Beriga, the snowshoe priest. These folks treasure their heritage and honor it in many ways. One way is the shrine of the snowshoe priest located on the shores of Indian Lake right next to the old Indian burial ground. Winch Dillard, a native of this area, takes us on a guided tour. Great place to make a stop, whether you're by yourself or with the family, is out here on Indian Lake and at the Bishop Berriga Shrine. Now, Winch, you can tell us a little bit about this area and what is it exactly? Well, it's a small piece of property that was donated to the city uh, years ago and they've steadily improved on it. it this is the site of Bishop Berriga's first church in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan uh, back in 1832. Wow. Uh, he landed here. Uh, there was a there's a tribe of Chippewa Indians that lived here, and uh, this is where they set up the, his first church. Okay, first church. Now he's he's actually traveled all over the uh, Upper Midwest here. Yep. Uh, through Minnesota, Wisconsin, all through Upper Michigan. But this is the first church. That, that kind of surprised me. Well, he started on Beaver Island and just kept steadily moving north. Frederick Berrigo was called the Apostles of the Ottawas and the Chippewas. Berga was born and trained in Europe. He arrived to begin his work here on December 31st, 1830. During his lifetime, Berga founded many missions in northern Michigan. The original Indian Lake Mission was built in anticipation of his first visit to the area in May of 1832. The chapel, built by local Chippewas, used traditional Indian construction methods and materials such as logs and bark. Based on historical information, the Indian Lake Mission was rebuilt in the early 1980s on the original mission site. In 1984, a grotto was constructed in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary. A 30-foot copper cross reaches high into the sky as the latest addition to the shrine. The site contains an Indian burial ground which contains the remains of Chief Ashwinamaki his son, and other tribal members. The burial ground was built near the water facing the west, and a path from the water's edge was always kept clear. Upon the death of an Indian, the body was wrapped in a very heavy birch bark, tied with basswood cord, and then placed in a shallow grave over which was placed the spirit house. The houses varied in size and shape. A totem stick identified the deceased and gave any passerby pertinent information about the person. Because it was believed that the four-day journey to the land of Panema was filled with peace and plenty, significant food and drink were placed in the spirit house along with the body of the deceased person's dog or some other friendly animal. This is a very sacred and solemn place to the Native Americans. So when you visit, please show respect and stay at the perimeter and admire it from afar. The trees surround this place along with the sands of Indian Lake and if you're quiet when the breeze blows, you will hear the spirits thanking you for your reverence.